Hello class, I want to welcome you to week one, um, and uh, there's a few things I want to say um, here on my somewhat lazy Sunday that I'm having here. Um, so make sure that you watch all of my announcements. This is a really important thing. Um, it looks like most of you watched my first one. Um, look, sometimes I ramble on and on, and, and uh, you know, it'd be good if I could maybe edit myself a little bit better. But ultimately, um, the announcements are important, an important part of this class. Sometimes I revise things or I give you a heads up. Sometimes I make a correction on something. And so um, if I see, because it shows me if people are watching the videos or not, um, and as the end of the semester happens, I often get less and less views. And then people start asking me questions that have already been answered in the announcements. And that's a little pet peeve of mine. Um, so, and, and just to clarify, if I have a problem with people not watching my announcements, and especially if I'm being asked questions that were already addressed in the announcements, I will start giving surprise quizzes. So just, <laughs> let's just avoid that. Now, okay, having said that, Hopefully, these announcements will not be too painful for you. Um, uh, in any case, um, look, so here's what I want to kind of say, like, to help you out with the class. One of the biggest questions I'm getting right now, for, uh, uh, right away, is the issue of the textbook. So, um, I am having difficulty, believe it or not, actually getting textbooks because the textbook industry no longer wants to sell textbooks. What, the, the, this, this is a new problem that I've just been coming up with, which is that they want us to buy these online programs that come with these this stuff that I don't want that just outsources grading to the textbook. So I get this textbook and then you take a quiz or a test from the, with the questions already that come with the program and um, and then it grades it for me. And I'm supposed to be so thankful for this great thing. And hey, you know, you don't have to carry this textbook around. Meaning that they just have this like digital thing out in the ether and it costs a lot of money. And then your class goes away and you don't have a textbook. And uh, they just made a lot of money. Like, I don't know. I'm really annoyed. So for the first time in my teaching, after years of teaching, textbooks that I always got from my classes. And, and I made, I set up my all of my classes to, to correlate with textbooks that I was using, especially in my Western Civ class. Well, now this is becoming a problem and I already have these pre-made um, voice lectures. So I'm pretty, uh, I don't know. So here's, here's what I'm going to suggest. If you got to order online a connections textbook that's not the same edition, the problem is going to be that sometimes I might have a, a, an assignment or a question or do a section that doesn't correlate with the textbook numbers that you have. The information will basically be the same. What I want you to do then is I want you to contact me and we can look through the textbook situation and kind of see if uh, we just need to find like where the equivalence would be at. That's not ideal. I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. In this class... Um, while the textbook is important, I think that, that, you know, those kind of issues can, will not be super hard to like resolve. I mean, so just keep that in mind. Okay. And hopefully this is going to be my first, this, this next several semesters are going to be the first time that I'm seeing how to handle this problem and if the, how big of an issue it's going to be in terms of just like for the logistics for the student. So give me some feedback. Uh, um, on how you're doing with the textbook and following what we're doing and how that's working out, okay? Um, and so, let's see, what else? Okay, so then, um, once you guys turn in some of the video notes, I'm going to um, uh, post an example. I might even be able to do that before if I find somebody else's old uh, um, notes, but this is really what I expect every week, okay? This is going to be almost like the standard routine, um, unless I change things up. Is that you're, you're going to have your discussion, you're going to have your video notes, 
and then uh, do on Thursdays by midnight. And then Sunday by midnight, you're going to have your papers due, okay, on topics that I have. I kind of discussed this in the first announcement, but I want to address this again, okay? So this will be easy this week. You're doing an introduction of yourself, okay? And then you respond to somebody else. Keep in mind that every week you get uh, points for addressing the topic that I have, and then you get points for addressing two other students. If you don't address another student, you don't get full points, no matter how much you write and how brilliant you sound, okay? So you need to follow that routine, and it's not that hard to do once you get the flow of it, okay? So the discussion part should be a kind of easy 15 points. The only thing I'm going to address, really, is I don't like BS, okay? I know the material we're covering. If you just start going into the discussion and, and talking to people about whatever, like, wow, yeah, this is cool, or blah, blah, blah. Like, if you're not revealing that you have some sort of understanding of the material we just covered, or if you're not addressing something that we covered in the discussion, I am... Um, at some point, I'm going to not give you points. We're going to have a discussion about that, okay? Everything in this class is very straightforward. And it can be relatively easy if you just follow my routine. What I expect of you is to demonstrate to me that you are participating in the class. That's it, okay? So, in the discussions, show me that you are really, you know... I, I, should, I should be able to read your guys' discussions and be like okay, my students are doing the work, right? You've watched the videos and you're doing some reading and you put some thought into it. And if you get something wrong, I will just tell you, I'll correct it on the, this, in the discussion. That's, that's only usually the time that I intervene in the discussions. But it, you won't lose points for it if I think that you misunderstood something like from my lectures or the textbooks. In fact, that will happen. That's what happens sometimes. People miss, gosh, professors misunderstand other professors works you know and and so that isn't going to be the problem i just want to see you're engaged okay so now let's go to the notes the notes okay you're going to see all these videos and like i i also said i think i think i did cover this in the first announcement you're going to have a little bit of a panic attack and you're going to see the reading and you're going to have a little bit of a panic attack but this is a summer class okay so i I don't know why. Every time like students take these cram courses, I get people that come in and then they are in shock about the work that we have to do. I mean, if a course is reduced in time, it doesn't reduce the content that's covered. That's the thing about cram courses in college. So you have to come into this ready to work. And um, like right off the bat. So yes, you have to watch every video that I post. And yes, you have to write notes on all of them. Okay? But if you really look, if you see how long the videos are and you start getting familiar with like the routine, I promise you, this is really how it works. I have many students that drop my classes and the ones that usually stay and tough it out end up getting B's and A's and telling me that they're happy they stayed and that it didn't end up being that hard because I have a routine. I don't throw any weird things in the mix. You don't have to memorize all these things. This is very important. I don't do a lot of testing and quizzing. I do papers and I have you demonstrate for me that you've learned something. That's what's important to me. I don't like these whole um, kind of exams like, you know, what like the stamp act of blah 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 you know like to to, to have a, a, a you have to memorize all these like these numbers like a math equation because what ends up happening is people study for those exams they do well or they do not so well and they go home and they don't think about it again they're not learning something from it if you you know i want you to get a bigger understanding of like why are we studying this what's important about world history what are some of the events that have happened when you look and you see Korea and the Middle East and you see Latin America and you're, and you're trying to understand what all these conflicts are and, and like why people have these long-standing or not as long as people think standing conflicts or whatever. Like whatever's happening, you just want to have an understanding, right? It's like in U.S. history. 
you know, what, what was the Civil War over slavery or not? Americans still debate this. And if you take my 101 class, I'll show you it's not a debate. It was over slavery. And that, that debate can be won in five minutes. But what's weird is that it's a, it's a serious debate that takes place even by people with PhDs. Now, there's a reason for this, which I don't have time for. If you ever want to discuss that with me, I'm more than happy to do that. But here's also my point. That's what's important. Uh, Americans, you know, you know, kids stay in high school, you know, trying to study, like, learning all these different, like, you know, when the cotton gin was, was uh, produced, as opposed to the what was significant about the cotton gin and cotton itself and why did we kill half a million of ourselves? Uh, uh, um, what was the real cause? And, like, why is there even confusion about it? Because there's a reason, by the way, for the U.S. Civil War, there is a reason why there is a debate about it. It's because the way that the North addressed it and the reasons for the North, which was not believing in secession, and the Southern Confederate leadership fearing that Abraham Lincoln's election would put an end to slavery ended up being what happened. So so it's it's complex, but yet it's easy to um, break down in a short amount of time. Now, here's my whole point. Not to go into that right now, but to say that this is my approach to history, which is to get you to get involved with those things. And by the way, if you end up disagreeing with an interpretation of mine, that's okay too. I want you to walk out of my class being able to say, okay, I understand what's at stake now. And that's what I'm looking for in the content of your stuff. So when you watch my videos and you're taking notes... I say I want two points made for every video unless I tell you. Sometimes if I have you watch a longer clip, I'll tell you to write more. And so what am I saying? Excuse me. I'm saying um, prove to me you watch this video and you learn something important from it. So when I look at your notes, essentially it should be obvious to me that you actually watched the videos that I wanted you to watch. And that you learn something from them. Okay? And it can be short. But it's like, I give an example to say, if you say Martin Luther was a man. Or he was a priest. That's a point. But what's... Okay. Now, it's more important that you say he was a Catholic priest. Because that's, that's significant to the topic of him. But then... Why do we study Martin Luther? And I'm not talking about Martin Luther King Jr. I'm talking about Martin Luther as in the German theologian uh, uh, that set off the Protestant Reformation. This is what's important about Martin Luther, right? Is that he basically ignites a spark that sets Europe on fire and makes Europe kill each other the way that you see what's happening in the Middle East. Now, I'm not blaming him for that, but I'm simply pointing out that the Protestant Catholic wars made Europeans kill and slaughter each other eventually on a scale that looks very similar to what you're seeing in right now in Iraq and uh, Yemen and uh, Syria. Okay? So, the bottom line is, what? why are we studying these things? Show me this in these notes. And then on the papers on Sunday, and again, I want to reiterate this, and I'm going to end this, this announcement soon. I won't take it much longer. Look at the Sunday questions first for the papers. I can't stress that enough. And then when you write the notes, write on notes that will help you out with your Sunday paper. And then you can use your notes to formulate the paper. These are not research assignments. The Sunday papers, I don't even want Wikipedia. I don't want outside sources. I want you to give me a kind of cliff note version of what my lectures and the documentary clips and like use the textbook, some of the documentary clips or my lectures as the basis for the papers. If you do that, I don't need a bibliography or you to put references to anything. Now, I'm telling you I don't want outside sources. If you do outside sources a little bit, not entirely, I will not take off points for that. But you better cite them. When it comes to plagiarism, I'm not going to tolerate this anymore. 
you really need to like understand. I know my material and every semester I get like such obvious blatant, I just, please don't. So, um, so again, everything's going to be about you demonstrating knowledge of what we learn in this class and that's it. Now, uh, I work tomorrow, Monday, uh, all day. I'll be a little bit hard to get a hold of, but then I'm going to have off the next few days uh, where I can really be available. So um, I do encourage people to text me only because one, I'm on a lunch break or I'm at a break. If you have a quick question, I can sometimes get to you that way. Okay. Um, and I, and I also though, if you write to me on canvas, I do have, you know, like 48 hours to be able to get back to you. I try to get back to you quicker than that. R try to write to me to canvas through canvas. No, please. If you're going to write to me, I'm asking you to write to me through canvas and not the, um, MJC, uh, website because I get a bunch of other, uh, um, junk mail and other things that I sometimes don't see a student's, uh, message. When you send it to Canvas, it gives me a notification and it's like Canvas is telling me that I need to read somebody's email. It, like it, 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 it centers in on you and it tells me which class you came from because I'm, I'm teaching another class as well. So that's like what the best thing to do, okay? So I hope this was helpful. I hope you're having a good week and uh, we'll be in touch. And uh, I'm excited to have you guys all for this class. And that's all I got to say. I think I'm gonna get a cup of coffee. All right.